Hello Aquarius and welcome to your tarot card reading for May 2024. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jane and in these readings we really go through a tarot card prediction and astrology prediction. I really, really try my hardest to link these two together to give you the most accurate predictions that you can possibly get here on YouTube. So we are going to go ahead and get right into this. Um, if you are interested in a private reading, I've made some changes to my offering and as of May 1st, those will be made available on my website for booking. So if you're interested, the links can be found in the description box and the pinned comment down below. So be sure to keep your eyes open for that. I'm very excited to be connecting with all of your energy this month. It's a very exciting month as we have Jupiter coming into Gemini at the end of May. We have Taurus season. We have Venus and Mars in rulership. We have really wonderful things happening in the sky that are going to help push us forward. So with that being said, you're welcome to check out your sun, moon, or rising sign. If you're brand spanking new and you have no idea, just check out your sun sign. That's fine. And if you're kind of exploring, please check out all three of those signs to see which one resonates with, with you the most. Some readers will resonate with different placements. So if you resonate more with your sun or rising with me, then that would be who you would watch with me. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Thank you all again. You guys know I love and appreciate each and every one of you for being here. So let's go ahead and get started. Hello Aquarius and welcome to your May 24 reading. Let's go ahead and get started here with an Oracle card. What is it that Aquarius needs to know for May 2024? Know your worth. Okay. As we are going about life, making life decisions, thinking about where we want to go, what goals we want to achieve, having that underlying sense of I deserve this and it's okay for me to have it and you know, it's not evil, it's not bad or anything like that. To have that kind of attitude moving forward is always, always going to be in your absolute best interest. And one of the things I love so much about May, not only do we have Venus in rulership, but we also have Mars in rulership too. So we have this beautiful balance of the masculine and the feminine, both really strong. And the Venus in Taurus really speaks to this. And this is happening in your fourth house, which is a really fundamental house. Okay. This is the house from which everything else can truly blossom. So having that underlying sense of worth, that underlying sense of deserving is going to not only just be good for the soul and good for your mind and your mental health and your physical health, but it's also going to be really good for your endeavors and the things that you're going after. Cause I know having Mars coming through that third house is going to be very active. It's going to be a lot of brainstorming. There's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be a lot of transition for you. So I do feel like Aquarius is going to go through a period of like this push, right? You're going to be pushing in your creative efforts and for your own personal expansions and going about it with just this underlying tone of knowing your worth. It's going to make everything better. It's going to make everything more pleasant, more enjoyable. You're going to find more fulfillment and more joy. And that really is the goal, isn't it? To have more joy. Um, so I'm going to pull out a question card. These are from the soul truth deck, uh, just questions for contemplation and meditation. And I'll read the little back, the little part on the back there. Am I letting fear stop me? Okay. And then it says, are you experiencing a mountain of fear right now? Are you stalling, freezing, or giving up? The juicy secret is that you are the boss of fear. You are unstoppable, but it's up to you to see to that by taking action. Yes. Mars and Aries, um, even well, actually Aries and Taurus, like the combination of these two is a really, really positive, uh, kind of astrological moment in terms of taking action. I think the, the real action is more Taurian at this point, um, simply because we had so much activity in Aries last month with the eclipse, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. We had the Mars Saturn conjunction. It was just a high, highly condensed moment in Aries. And now we're kind of in the aftermath of that. And we get to kind of sort everything out. And when we're sorting everything out, we get to start setting plans. We get to start, 
implementing things and we get to really start getting our hands in the dirt and start making the stuff happen. So we have the drive and the fire and the impulse of Aries and we have the structure and the kind of femininity and the abundant quality of Taurus. So we have like this really amazing balance that's happening. So letting fear get in your way is completely the opposite of knowing your worth. Because if you are fearful, that you are diminishing that natural universal gift. You are diminishing the light and in a way you are depriving the world of that light. Okay. So we really want to see Aquarius shine as much as possible. And I, there will be mistakes and there will be some fluctuations and there will be some ups and downs and, and that's perfectly fine. Right. I think that's to be expected because it's still life after all. Um, but you know, we shouldn't let that stop us ever. So let's see what the tarot has to say for Aquarius for May, 2024. Yeah. Well, the 10 of swords is definitely the fear or the insecurity or the shame or the guilt or the negative psychological programming that you've been trying hard to unwind. I'll see beautiful. Look at all the Aries energy coming out. Um, an Aries card with the emperor. And then we have the fiery initiating quality, which is very Aryan as well. This is very Mars Aries. Um, see even here, the emperor know your worth. I mean, an emperor doesn't even think twice about whether or not he deserves something or whether or not he can, or is capable. Like the answer is yes. If you're sitting there, like, can I really do that? Like, yes, you can. Okay. Look, if you look around and you see other people doing it, you can do it too. Maybe your circumstances are different. Maybe you don't have all the resources other people have, but that doesn't really matter. It's more about the faith in yourself, more about the faith in the universe and the, the intelligence and the miraculousness of the universe as well. This is one of the things that makes the emperor so powerful is that he understands that there are these universal forces at play constantly. And while he can still push in the world in a physical way by taking action that, you know, is going to get him out of a situation in which he's not very happy with, which is your 10 of swords. Cause when I look at this 10 of swords, it's like, clearly you don't want to be here. Clearly you're trying to unpin yourself. You're trying to, uh, kind of resurrect yourself from something. I mean, clearly you're trying to push yourself up off the ground here. Um, so why not start today? And that's the thing about Taurus season too, is it's very persistent. It is a day to day, wake up moment to moment, hour by hour, second by second kind of deal. All you have to do is in this moment is make the best choice for yourself. You do not need to, I mean, you can think about the big picture and I think that's good to have that kind of end goal and that end game, but you also kind of need to know in order to achieve that you know, what can you do today? What can you do that is in, in alignment with that bigger goal today? Is it moving money around? Is it earning more money? Is it getting a new job? Is it getting into or out of a relationship? Is it moving to a new place, buying a new house, like whatever? What is it that you can do today to help yourself get there? And it really is about helping yourself because right now I don't see a lot of collaborative energy in, well, there were a couple signs that had a little bit of it, but for most, for, for the most part, it's like, this is Taurus and Aries. This is about self-reliance and independence and autonomy. So we really have to put that stuff on our own shoulders here. And I'm clearly seeing the impulse. I'm clearly seeing the energy as we move through the first 10 days of Taurus season, we have, well, not of Taurus season, but of May, excuse me, Taurus season started back in April, but the sun is coming into a conjunction with Uranus the second we hit May 1st, right? We're officially in a 10 degree conjunction, sun, Uranus, sun continues on to conjunct with the Uranus and then Jupiter. So there is this really expansive, um, electrifying sun, creative, self-expressive energy that's going to come through in the middle of May. Okay. And then we start to hit the Gemini stuff later in the end of May with the sun coming in and then Venus comes in and then eventually Jupiter comes in and then eventually Mercury will come in. So like, we're going to have all this fifth house energy, which is going to be massive for creation for Aquarius. All right. So it's kind of getting started now. You're really starting to feel that 
heat, hopeful, hopefully, I really hope so. You may not have all the ideas in the world, but I think the determination to unpin yourself from this 10 of swords is really strong. This is about freedom. And I do think the Jupiter Uranus conjunction that happened over the past few months was so much about finding freedom and revolutionizing your own life. All right, the five of wands in the center of the reading, first of all, there could be other people involved. And what happens when we start to make changes a lot is we tend to realize that certain people, certain relationships and circumstances really are not conducive to our foundational success. And having third house transits really does lend itself to your community and the people with whom are close by, you know, your immediate environment and really thinking about, you know, what's going on around me and being hyper vigilant about cleaning up the environment as much as possible. I'm not suggesting you have to move or you have to quit your job or anything like that. I don't want you to destabilize yourself so much that you put yourself in this state of fear because we're not trying to be in fear states, right? We're trying to be in knowing your worth states. So we want to focus more on the things that are productive and solid and that make us feel that sense of security to a degree and to help us to kind of bring forth that confidence a little bit more. Um, but with the five of wands, like there's still some shaky stuff. Aries season really shook stuff up for a lot of people. A lot of people felt that a lot of people felt like, okay, this is my new life. This is my new me. This is my new chance. And yet some people are going to feel that and not do anything about it. And so when you have that feeling and you don't do anything about it because you're still too afraid, and then you see other people doing something about it, it triggers something within you. And then you kind of start to feel sour. And then it goes into this five of wands kind of place. So there could be people around you that are just a little bit angrier or feeling a little bit competitive, or they're trying to suck you into their drama, or they're trying to get you to kind of step down off of this emperor's throne and kind of sink down. But again, remembering know your, knowing your worth, there's so much that goes into knowing your worth and setting boundaries is a big, big part of that. So being able to say no, being able to turn off or turn away, or just walk away from a five of wands, chaotic, com competitive, drama, petty type of situation, being able to do that is only going to serve you. And that ultimately will serve these people because if they, if you allow them to take from you, it's only going to feed their fear even more. It's not going to be helpful for them. It's not a service to them for you to jump in and try to fix the problem. Um, putting stuff like holding people accountable is really important under Aries and Taurus. Holding individuals accountable for individual actions and behaviors and words. You know, it's, we're, we're not trying to cross that. We're not trying to enmesh right now. We can do that later. We can do that like in Scorpio. We can do that in Pisces, maybe a little bit in Libra. Okay. But right now we don't enmesh with other people's lives. You have your life. Therefore you're responsible for yours. I have mine and I'm going to be responsible for mine. And even if you're in a marriage, even if you're in a partnership, even if you have children, right? There's always this, like, we're individuals. We can be together and have that too. But you know, there's, there's a, there's, there is a boundary. So you're going to have to really reinforce that boundary as much as you possibly can, because it's going to be the only way that you're going to be able to reestablish order in your life. Cause if this has been 10 of swords, five of wands, if you've had disorder in your life, you can't feed the disorder and find order. You have to feed the order and structure in order to dissolve the disorder. And we're trying to dissolve the disorder because it leads to too much fear. It feeds the fear too much. And what I love about the six of coins is that reminder of flow that when you let stuff go like a five of wands, like a 10 of swords, when you let that stuff go and you release more will come because voids have to be filled. So if you purposefully create a void where this once existed, something better is going to come along in the form of the Ace of Wands to fill in and pull your attention. And you can feed an Ace of Wands 
guiltlessly, right? That ace of wands is a beautiful thing to feed the desire, the impulse, the creativity. Those are productive spirit led things. These are not. Okay. Now, one thing with the seven of coins, it's a very objective kind of card for me. Sometimes it's not about your emotion, about how you feel about things. It's very matter of fact. And I like this for an air sign a lot because it allows you to really use that mind of yours to just think about something, like I say, in an objective way where you can sit down and say, okay, where am I at? You could just get to tell it like it is with where you're at. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm dealing with. This is my list of stuff. This is my finances. This is the state of my relationship. This is what it is. And what I do like about the sky right now too, is that we just don't have that much water. We have Saturn and Neptune and Pisces like, yeah, okay. I mean, Saturn is a very stabilizing planet. So it's actually bringing a lot of stabilization to the emotion right now. And you know, Neptune is Neptune. He's doing his thing, but everything else is either in Aries or Taurus. We got Pluto in Aquarius, you know, we got Aries and North node, uh, Aries and Aries, Aries and Libra. If I could talk <laughs> North node, South node, you know, so we don't have any cancer. We don't have any Scorpio. So it's not really about how we feel. It's more about just the reality and the, the current state you know, and just looking at it at face value, taking stock and being like, this is where I am. So in order for me to get to where I want to go, what do I need to leverage? How do I find the resources? And you know, how do I find the time and whatever? And thinking about it in a super logical, easy, digestible, not overwhelming type of way. Nothing has to be overwhelming right now. And in fact, actually the more underwhelming you can make the process of chasing after your ace of wands, the better, like break it down into steps. Like today I can do these two things and that's good. And then tomorrow I'll do these other two things. And then the next day I'll do these other two things and just make it so you'll succeed. Like you don't have to make it this whole big thing. You know, it's just like, what do I need to do today to succeed today? and just keep it at that. Because that's kind of what an emperor, like I say, the emperor has all the faith in the world and the higher power, but it also has faith in himself in being like, okay, but I also need to match the universe. You know, like you can't find the love of your life if you never ever leave the house. So you have to like leave the house. You can't ever make more money if you don't do anything or creating anything to make more money right? You'll always just be where you're at. I mean, you can sit and wait around for the lottery. If you want to do that, you can do that or an inheritance or something. You could do that, but do you want to sit around and wait? Is that what you want your life to be? If yes, fine. If not, then you got to do something about it. So, you know, this is all very practical and, and easy. And I think that the emperor doesn't want things to be complicated. You know, he wants a straight line. This is a Mars ruled card. Mars likes to go straight. It doesn't like all these detours. It doesn't like all these spins and turns and ups and downs. It just wants to go in a straight line. I want to get from point A to point B. What is the fastest possible route for me to do that? And then you just do it. Because in your heart of hearts, you probably know at least the next three steps that need to be taken. Okay, so if all you can see is three steps, then just take three steps. Great, that's success. Because you're worth it. Because you're worth those three steps. Your bank account is worth those three steps. Your relationship is worth those three steps. It's all worth it, you know? Final cards. What I'm really liking about May is that I'm not seeing a ton of disruption. We're not getting all these huge major arcana cards. Like, I mean, yeah, we got two majors, but I mean, this one's reversed. We got the high priestess. I mean, she's not necessarily the heaviest hitter in the, in the major arcana. She's usually a little bit more about what goes on beneath the surface, but you know, we're not seeing these big like tower cards and death cards and you know, these really heavy things. So I do feel like generally speaking, May is just going to be pretty smooth, pretty organic. It's going to feel very natural. Look at all of these aces that you're getting ace of wands, ace of cups. To me, this is like, you know, spirit and spirit and heart just coming into alignment, just won't, you know, like, you know what you want. There's not, it's not a question of knowing what you want. It's not a question of, 
you know, whether or not you're ready for it. It's not a que- it's not a question. It's just a matter of feeding it. That's all. You just have to n- give, provide it nutrients. That's Taurus food, right? We consume in Taurus. And so we have to like make sure that the nutrients are available. We have to make sure we are taking care of ourselves. Knowing your worth is a part of that. Um, I feel that this is more speaking to an, to Aquarius in more creative ways. So like your creativity is really what is being accentuated right now, using your creativity in a new way, using your talents and skills, which is also very Taurian in a new way. And Mars being in the third house with Mercury for the first 15 days is going to accentuate new ideas and there's going to be new pathways and new, um, new trajectories that reveal themselves. And that's kind of what I'm seeing with the ACEs. It's new trajectories. And there may be multiple opportunities, multiple options. And when in your objective state here, seven of coins, you can look at these multiple options and really discern which one makes the most sense, which one feels like the path of least resistance, which one is more accessible to me right now, which one is easiest. And I'm not saying you should always take the easiest route, but right now I don't know that there's anything wrong with that. If it's easy and you can do it and it still progresses your goal forward, by all means do it. Cause I'm not seeing a ton of resistance from within you right now. I mean, I think you're just so determined to get away from the things that you've had resistance with that you're like, I'll do anything to not have resistance right now. Let me not have resistance. Let me see the smooth sailing. Let me see the open skies and clear blue waters. Like I don't want the clouds. I don't want the storm. I don't want it. So I'm going to just follow the path that doesn't have it. And I think it really could be as simple as that. It really could be. It's just like a mindset. That's all. (laughs) And like, like the fear, like you may be skeptical that that even exists. Well, then that's rooted in fear, but it absolutely exists. And what's going to happen is this ace of coins is going to show up. Now, this is probably going to be a bit delayed because I think right now you're working on this alignment stuff. But once you hit the alignment, the opportunity, the physical, actual opportunity, the actual money, the actual person, the actual door opening, that will absolutely come. I feel that that ace of coins is merely in a holding place. It's kind of like in your vibrational bank account. It's in your, your savings account right now. It's in your vibrational savings account. And all you have to do is just make it to the bank. Okay. So right now... It's in a holding, but once you get there, once you find that alignment, once you start taking those steps, this will easily unlock for you. Like there's no effort at all. It'll be like one of your little miracles. It will easily unlock and you'll be on a whole new thing. Now, one thing about Gemini season, and I will talk about this more next month, is the fact that Gemini, the next year with Jupiter, It's going to be all about finding new pathways, similar to having Mars in the third house. I think Jupiter is going to kind of be in, be in a similar thing. Okay. It's going to be all about which direction, which road, which path, because Gemini is all about making connections, right? So we're trying to make all these new connections. It's going to be very new. There's going to be a lot of learning and a lot of brainstorming, and there's going to be a lot of, you know, mental stimulation, which I think is going to be fantastic for my air signs absolutely fantastic. Okay. So let's pull out the clarifiers. So we're going to pull out like a bunch of new cards and we're going to clarify these in the comprehensive reading. So if you want to join, you're more than welcome. We usually talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all these cards. So, um, it's like a whole separate second reading. We get really in depth. So if you want to join again, the link is in the description box and the pinned comment down below. So let's see. Okay. We have some cups. Yeah, I wasn't really getting that bad of a feeling from the Ten of Swords. You just want out of it so badly. Oh, beautiful. Love the fire. Love the fire. Ooh, ooh, a lot of masculine energy coming out there. So you're really tapping into the Mars and Aries too. Beautiful. I'm really loving the three of cups this month too. It's coming out as such as the wonderful, warm, celebratory energy. Mm. 
Love it. More aces. Six of cups. Six of coins. Okay. Star, eight of coins. Nine of coins. Did I even talk about the high priestess? I actually don't remember talking about the high priestess. I may have skipped her on accident. I'm so sorry. Uh, nine of wands. Okay. And beautiful. Okay, amazing. This is where we're going to pick up Aquarius. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Thank you again. You all know how much I love and adore you. Have an amazing month and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.